everybody. Welcome to the Minimalist Podcast, where we discuss what it means to live a meaningful life with less. My name is Joshua Fields Milburn. And I'm Ryan Nicodemus. And together, we are the Minimalists. We're here with TK Coleman. What it is. Alabama's here. Hi, everybody. We've got the rest of our team in the studio as well. Coming up today on this free public minimal episode, we're talking to a listener about some minimalist budgeting tips. We also have an outstanding lightning round listener tip and added value segment for you. You can check out the full three-hour maximal edition of episode 365, where we answer four times the questions and we dive deep into several simple living segments. That private podcast episode is out right now at patreon.com slash the Minimalists. Your support keeps our podcast and YouTube channel 100% advertisement free because advertisements advertisement suck. suck. Let's start with our callers. <laughs> if you have a question or comment for our show, give us a call 406-219-7839 or email a voice memo to podcast at theminimalists.com. Our first question today is from Nicole. This is Nicole from North Carolina. So I've worked through my values. And so now I'm generally spending money on experiences versus stuff, but I'm still dealing with lifestyle inflation. So I doubled my income about a year ago. And of course, my spending has followed suit. Every month, I have a $1,000 that goes towards my savings and my debt. And that's great, but I know that more could be going towards that. So I recently moved. I'm in a city that I love, and I love to go out and explore but I had to take it down a notch and start cooking at home. Either way, I know what I'm, you know, I'm I'm taking the right steps towards my goals, but are there any tips you can offer? Lifestyle inflation is an interesting concept, right? Mm. Because it's self-imposed inflation Mm -hmm. in a way, right? Mm -hmm. And so Nicole, I'll, I'll tell you this, that a rich person with poor spending habits Mm. is still broke. And now, I know this firsthand. Ryan knows this firsthand from our corporate days. We made really good money. A couple hundred thousand dollars a year in Dayton, Ohio, in the Oddies. We live like kings. Well, maybe princesses. <laughs> <laughs> but we lived well off of 200 grand a year in Ohio. Yeah. Well, no, we didn't. That's the problem. We didn't live well at all <clears throat> because we were overspending. We were mm. spending beyond our limits. And so when Ryan goes out and gives a talk and, and says minimalism is really just living within your means ism, mm. when you think about it that way, it's about intentionally using whatever resources you have. And that's where Nicole is. That's why, Nicole, I want to applaud you for asking this question because I'm not the type of person to give prescriptions. You all know this. But with something that's mathematical, like budgeting, I think part of it is understanding the math behind this. Mm. How much money do I make versus how much money am I spending? And then there's not just the mathematical component, the the, um, component that says... Here are the figures, but there's also the feelings that we have around money. And that is what causes us to spend outside of our budget. So there's no prescription that will change your feelings. You need to have a deeper understanding of what is causing you to constantly inflate your lifestyle. I'll give you two or three examples here. The first one is certainly advertisers. That's why when we start this podcast and we say advertisements suck, it's because quite often there are large corporate entities or just other entities who have their best interest in mind and don't have your best interest in mind. The second thing I'll say here is, oh, you know what? We often tell ourselves these stories about I'm missing out if I cook at home. But to me, cooking at home is one of the greatest privileges I have because now I know I don't have all the excess seed oils or preservatives or Mm. junk that may be going into the food at a restaurant because I can control more variables at home. And so that's really what we're talking about here is controlling the variables that we can control. It sounds to me like Nicole's already accepted the things that she cannot control. Yes, of course, there's going to be regular real inflation, Good luck trying to turn down real inflation. But the most inflation we we experience in our in our lives has to do with our overspending, our compulsive spending, our compulsory spending, our impulse spending. Oh, I saw that thing, so I should buy it right now. One last story for you. I was with I was with my daughter a few days ago, and we were walking through, there was this uh 
this beautiful festival. And we were walking and there was this crystal store that she wanted to walk into. And I'm like, okay, we can walk in there for sure. And we walked in there and she liked all the little shiny crystals and everything. And then all of a sudden she saw this ring and it just happened to be her size. And she puts the ring on and it fits perfectly. And she's, oh, it's so beautiful. I really, really, really want it. I know. I know she I, felt the power of the crystals. <laughs> <laughs> and she goes, I know I said I wouldn't buy anything before we came in here, but I really, really want it. I said, okay, would you be willing to wait a day and see if you still want it tomorrow. And if you still want it tomorrow, we can come back. We'll spend half your money, half my money on it because she started her own business recently. She mm -hmm. started a dog walking business at age nine. Nice. Oh, it's called nice. Paul's, by the way. <laughs> and uh, she's now taking on clients and actually earning her own money, $5 per dog walk. And so she's made over a hundred bucks so far. And so she's like right. trying to figure out what to do with this money. And mm -hmm. I said, okay, I'll pay for half. You pay for half. If you just remind me a day from now. Well, that was two weeks ago. And she hasn't mentioned it once. <laughs> wow. And why is that? Because she put some distance between the impulse mm. and the purchase itself. Ryan and I, we created this, the 30-30 rule or called, it's called, it's called the wait for it rule. If something costs more than $30, we give ourselves 30 hours to make that purchase. It gives you that time to make a decision because otherwise impulse will take over and it will ruin your life. It will cause that inflation that otherwise wouldn't be there. Here's yeah. how to spend money like a minimalist. Spend less money than what you make. Boom. Podcast over. <laughs> <laughs> Shut it down. Ding. Drop the mic. Ding. But no, I mean, it's, it, it, it is a simple equation, but as we know, simple is not easy. Mm. Yes. Um, and I think, you know, that's what Nicole is trying to figure out here. How does she spend less than what she makes? Um, I, I love what you talked about, uh, Millie, about uh, looking at it as a privilege to like cook at home. Because um, I know for you and for Mariah, mm -hmm. eating out actually is a detriment to, to her health. It's a detriment to your health sometimes. For sure. Um, I mean, we went to a Mexican place. Yeah. And great food, awesome food. She got... F steak fajitas with like no, no tortillas, you know, I think she, maybe she had like a bite of rice and beans. I mean, it was all for all intents and purposes, like real whole food. There wasn't anything processed there and it killed her. And I was yeah. like, oh, it's the seed oils. I mean, almost certainly probably. Yeah. But I'm like, oh, we can't, I'm like, we can't eat out anymore. Like we have to cook at home. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we have found ways to like find joy in cooking. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, Nicole's problem here, this is a good problem to have. It's, you know, how does she, she doubled her income, but yeah. how does she spend like a minimalist? It just goes back to spending less money than what you make. And how do you do that? You got to start with a budget. Like that's 100% sure. Yeah. And I used to have um, some friends and like mentoring clients. Uh, and, you know, I would, I would, uh, they would talk about very similar things that Nicole was talking about. And I'm like, well, do you have a budget? And um, a couple of times I heard, a budget. Like, I don't need a budget to know I'm poor. Mm. Like I'm poor, but I'm like, if you don't know how poor you are though, like you're, you're just going to keep spinning your wheels then. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like I use, uh, Mariah and I use every dollar. That thing is awesome. It's funny cause there's like a, uh, and I don't know how Ramsey is going to feel about this, how the Ramsey team is going to feel about this, but the pro version mm -hmm. creates less friction mm -hmm. yeah. to put, um, all your purchases into mm -hmm. like the different categories Yeah. where like the free version it creates so much more friction because you got to pull your phone out and like logging in every time you got to like, uh, you know, I, I go to my, um, accounts and I'm like, okay, like I gotta, you know, keep track of everything. Ryan's talking about the every dollar app. Yeah. The, the every way. dollar app. Yeah. Yeah. I did say, I did say we use every dollar, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's uh there's like a free version and a pro version. Um, yeah, I highly recommend it. Like it is, it is Mariah and I used to use a spreadsheet until we found out about that. There's just a couple other, budgeting apps out there yeah. too. But yeah, um, that was a freaking game changer, especially when we moved to LA. Because in Montana, Mariah and I were paying off debt. So we were using a budget. Yeah. We finally got debt free and it was awesome. Uh, and then I'm like, oh, we don't need a budget anymore. Like we'll just, you know, kind of go about it willy nilly. And then we moved to LA. I'm like, oh no, like we have to have a budget. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like this is not working. And, yes. and the funny thing yeah. about that is, Ryan, you and I both grew up really poor. And at some points, like, significantly poorer than the people around us even. Mm -hmm. And we would have really benefited the most at that time. 100%. From a budget, right? 100%, yes. And I can tell you that when I left the corporate world, took a 90% pay cut, the only way I was able to do that 
was to put together a budget. I made $23,000 in 2011. Mm -hmm. And the only way that I was able to survive on that was to have a budget because that budget helped me identify what was non-essential, what I could cut out Mm -hmm. so that I could live this life and I would no longer have to be tethered to some idealized lifestyle. Yeah. Nicole, congratulations on doubling your income. Wow. (laughs) That doesn't just happen. You did something. You did something. You stepped up. You took some risk. Uh, you made some improvements. So congratulations on that. That's that's really cool. What I would say is that budgeting isn't just for responsibilities. It's also for recreation. You can not only plan ahead or think ahead for responsibilities like paying bills, but you can also think ahead for play and adventure and the things that you like to do for fun. Sometimes we associate preparation with all the boring, you know, highly responsible stuff because that's what they make us do in school, right? If it's something that someone else is making you do, you got to plan ahead, you got to write everything down. And so we assume that unless it's absolutely spontaneous in every possible way, it can never be fun, but you can still have fun and think ahead about what the boundaries and parameters are. And so what I would suggest is just like you have a budget for all of the bills, for how much you want to save and how much debt you want to reduce, I would do the same thing with the fun that you want to have. Apply what I call the casino technique. Nothing wrong with saying I'm going to go in the casino and play around with some of my money for fun, but make your decision out of the heat of the moment. Don't wait till you get in the middle of a game of poker to start making a decision about how much you're okay with spending. Decide before you go into the casino. And it's the same thing as you go into your week. How much do you want to spend How much do you feel good about spending on recreation before you're in the middle of doing all the fun things and making your plans? That's all I'll say. Yeah. Here's one final practical thing for you, Nicole. We have a financial freedom ebook that you can download on our website. If you go to theminimalists.com, click on resources at the top, there's a financial freedom and it's the five steps that Ryan and I took to develop a budget to get out of debt and to stay out of debt which is one of the most important things because I had gotten out of debt before in my early 20s mm. yeah. and then got right back into it. Like, ah, what's one extra credit card? And then all of a sudden you have 14 credit cards. Yeah. You get used to those debt payments, man. It, and as soon as you ha- don't have any debt payments, you're instead of, and I was there, you don't think about like, oh, now I could save this money. Mm-hmm. How much was I paying each month on those credit cards? 500 bucks, 200, but whatever it is, instead of me going like, oh, that's going to go into my retirement, it was like, oh, now I can afford more debt. Mm-hmm. Which if, to say I can afford debt is a, it's it's kind of an oxymoron, right? Yeah. 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 Well, here's one more thing while you're over there on that resource page. Mm-hmm. There's a bunch of wallpapers you can download, our minimalist wallpapers. One of them is the five questions to ask before buying. And one of those questions is, is this the best use of that money? Mm-hmm. And what Ryan just illuminated there is, yes, maybe you can't afford a $300 debt payment, but is that the best use of that $400, $500, $1,000 a month? Yeah. And if not, it's okay to say no to that thing so you can say yes, because money is a finite resource. Even if you're wealthy, your money is limited, right? And so is this the best use of that money for you at this time? And that wallpaper, have it on your phone or your computer before you shop on Amazon or whatever, just having those five questions there and going through it real quick. That's an exercise in avoiding impulse. You can find those over at theminimalists.com. Just click the resources tab there at the top. On the private podcast coming up, we also have another question about inflation, a bunch of other questions as well. Ryan, what time is it? Oh, it's about 11 a.m. Pacific time. (laughs) Oh, you mean the lightning round. Yes, Josh, it is time for the lightning round where we answer your text messages. You can text your questions, your comments, your smart aleck remarks, your compliments to TK Coleman if you want. 937-202-4654. Well, I have some bad news here, Ryan. Oh, I don't know if it's really bad, but it's just... Uh, Why are you trying to moralize news? <laughs> <laughs> I have some ugly news. <laughs> unfortunate. And some unfortunate news here. So during the lightning round, this is where Ryan, TK, and I do our best to answer questions with a short, shareable, less than 140 character response. We put the text to these minimal maxims in the show notes so you can copy and share our pithy answers on social media if you like. You can find all of those social media pithy responses at theminimalists.com slash podcast right there in our show notes. And when you text your questions to us at the number Ryan just gave, it it goes to my phone and Ryan's phone and and eventually TK's phone, we hoped. And I say we hoped because 
I just got the news from Community, which is the service we use, Community Text, where we are able to have this service. We pay 250 bucks a month. We've been mm. doing this for years, mm-hmm. which is a lot of money to be able to text yeah. people, right? $250 yeah. a month. Yeah. Well, I just got the news from them that it's going to go up to almost $2,000 a month. What? Wow. So we're just going to give out TK's phone number (laughs) (laughs) directly. (laughs) And the unfortunate thing here is that we were sending folks a Monday morning minimal maxim each week. Just a, a nice way to start your week off with a dose of simplicity. And we're not going to be able to keep doing that going forward because of budgeting. Corporate greed, baby. This is not the best use of our $1,500 or $2,000. No. no. Even even if we could afford it, I'm tempted to just be like, no, like you can't blackmail us like that. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there's there's a couple companies and I won't get into it now, but there are a couple companies who have done this Mm -hmm. and uh, it's slimy. It's so slimy. When does it go up to $2,000? By the time this episode comes out, mm. did they explain why are they adding new features? Are there is there cost of doing business going up? But what's going on? But they, yeah, they're a corporation and they want to make money. And I mean, they but, stuck, but, they, but did they even lie they about it? Did they even need, give us a they have stuck sounding? the needle in our arm <laughs> and they're like, you have or we have what you want, and it's going to cost yeah. you this now. <laughs> yeah, and so yeah. what I'll say going forward is you can message us your lightning round questions on. TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We're at The Minimalists. Mm. And you'll find us there on all of those platforms. And you can Mm -hmm. message us for free. We just can't afford to keep spending. Even if we could afford it, I don't think that's the best use of $2,000 a month. And, And so... I don't have any animus toward them. I, the the reason that they explained is there there are certain text messaging costs and they're they're going to a per message basis. And because we have thousands wow. of people on that list, every time we send a text, so I could do the service for about two hundred bucks a month if we sent no texts, which wouldn't make a whole lot of sense. So we could receive them. But we couldn't respond back. Right. But we also couldn't send large inspirational texts of minimal maxims each week. And really what we're using it for, we couldn't use it the same way. And to continue to use it the same way that we're using it right now to add value to people's lives, it would cost us way more than we're willing to spend. I was willing to spend $250 a month, which is a big expense for us every month. But going beyond that is just simply not in our budget. What's the name of the service provider? Community. So, hey, to any and all competitors, to community, <laughs> I want to appeal to a uh, little voluntarism, a <laughs> little entrepreneurial <laughs> thinking. Yeah. If there are any alternative services out there that can beat that deal, mm. we're open to considering your offer. This is a great opportunity for a competitor to say, hey, I'll be happy to steal that business by making your customers happy in a way that you're not willing to do. I'm happy to entertain what offers you have. Spoken like a true economist. I love it. Now, if it was worth the $2,000 a month, I would totally be willing to give Danny Unknown a pay cut. (laughs) 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 That's not bad news. It is ugly news, though. Yeah. That is unfortunate, man. When when he said we hoped that we'd include TK on this, I thought he was saying because the price was going up, We're no longer going to be needing TK services. We need to go back down to just two people. (laughs) We we had to choose between TK and texting. We chose texting. (laughs) We chose texting. Now, Josh, Uh, you and I used to work in telecom. uh Uh-huh. Um, how much money does it cost a phone company to send it or receive a text? Yeah, and, uh, essentially nothing. Or, or data. Yeah. Like it's data and text messaging. Now, there's equipment cost. Mm-hmm. There are some costs. I'm not trying to make it sound free. But once you have the equipment in place, like but it's... The fixed costs are there. The, yeah. The, the nominal costs are so uh, minuscule. But Ma- look, maybe they have text messaging fees. Maybe they need to change their telecom provider at community to get free <laughs> text messages. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's jump, jump into our lightning round here. Taylor has a question for us. I just read an article about how some big retail stores are considering letting people keep items they want to return while still giving them a refund. What does this say about the true cost of returning some things? You know, the cost goes way beyond the price tag and not, not buying a thing is letting it go in advance. So... I prefer to not return things. I had to return something this week and it drove me crazy. Mm. I had to return a like little sculpture that we bought because it was way too big and I had to repackage it. I had to go through like the man I've taken to the FedEx store mm. at the wait in line and there are all of these other costs. But 
man, wouldn't I have just saved had I not bought this thing in the first place? Now, it turns out it was a thing that I wanted. It just didn't fit where I wanted it. And so you'll never get past it. I understand where some of these corporations are coming from. They don't want to deal with all the logistics of returning. However, I will say this, that it probably will incentivize some bad actors to go in and say, I'll just return it. Yeah. This happens with Casper Mattress now. It's like, if mm. you don't want that Casper Mattress, they'll come donate it to your local donation warehouse. Then you can just go buy it back for like $50 yeah. instead of the $1,000 you spent on it. <laughs> and it incentivizes bad behavior. That mm. is one of the knock-on effects of inadvertently changing your, your process. Yeah. Yeah. I shouldn't say inadvertently, but it's one of the knock on effects of, of changing the process and not anticipating that, that other result. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Uh, my maxim here was, uh, great businesses value people over profits. And so I think there is a certain degree of win, win, when a company says, all right, you don't have to worry about giving that back to us. We'll just send you a replacement. The win-win is that the company doesn't have to worry about coming to pick it up and dealing with all the logistics of returning the item. But you also don't have to deal with being harassed over it, especially when it's something small. And I know for me, there's there are fewer things more irritating when, than when a, a provider gets it wrong and then I have to do the extra work of getting a box and boxing something back up and doing this and doing that. I want them to take that, you know, um, take that inconvenience. And so there's an aspect to it uh, that that's a win-win. But, you know, I, I really think one of the things it says is that the cost of replacing a customer is much greater than the cost of replacing a thing. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's and the truth. The best businesses are the ones that don't argue with you when you say, I'm unhappy, I'm not satisfied with your product. That's why people love Chick-fil-A so much, right? You, I mean, even if you lie and they know they're taking that risk, hey, you guys forgot my soda. They're not gonna be like, no, we didn't, check, mm -hmm. right? Even though they know you might be lying and that's a risk, they'll say, no problem. Mm -hmm. And they'll just replace the item because they understand that satisfied customers outweigh the losses that come with people that abuse the system. There's nothing like making customers so happy that they're willing to go tell 10 other people how awesome you are. Yeah. And so I, I think it's a, it's a positive move. And, and that's something that gets overlooked with entrepreneurship, taking care of your customers and making them happy and not just trying to ding them for every dime is actually good for business in the long run. Mm. It's the opposite of what we're experiencing with the community text messaging platform. Right. Now. Yeah. And now maybe they can't afford to keep us around because their business changed substantially. But at this point, I simply can't afford it. You can't afford it. You can't afford it. We can't afford it. And it's not the best use of our money. Yeah. Uh, yeah, my pithy answer is this. The true cost of an item extends well beyond the price tag. So there's the cost of storing the thing, cleaning the thing, watering the thing, fixing the thing, changing the batteries in the thing, refueling the thing, changing the oil in the thing, replacing the thing. Uh, and, you know, when it's all said and done, we we eventually get rid of the thing. Mm -hmm. And like that doesn't even include like the psychological uh, or emotional or even the environmental costs of our things. When I hear something like this, that's what pops up in my mind, like the Casper mattress. It's like, oh, wow. Like we look at our finite resources as expendable, like mm -hmm. as a as something that we can just kind of toss aside and let the land landfill deal with it. Let the environment deal with it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, this has always been an issue with, uh, with the true cost. we got so much more to talk about. Malabama, let's check in with our live stream. What questions do we have? By the way, every Tuesday on Patreon for our video private podcast subscribers, we do a Patreon live stream where you can ask your questions and drop your comments in the chat. What do you got for us, Malabama? Lots of love today and plenty of questions. We're going to start with Lindsay with an E. I've gotten so accustomed to my current lifestyle that things like Netflix, HBO Max, et cetera, are hard to let go of. How do we decide what to cut out when things are already accounted for in your budget? I'm not going to tell you how to do it, Lindsay, but I'll tell you how I do it. I will do the scorched earth approach. You've heard of burning fields, right? It doesn't have my name is Joshua <laughs> Fields Milburn, and I'm often burning fields. Mm -hmm. So when farmers burn fields so they can replant it, it refertilizing the land, give it a break to start from scratch. Mm. And so I did this recently with my subscription services. I got rid of 
Netflix and Hulu. I got rid of Paramount Plus and Apple TV and YouTube Premium and Spotify and Apple Music and Pandora and Tidal. Yes, I had Tidal as well. I had all of these streaming services. And so there was probably around a dozen, 13, 14 streaming services that over the top, over time I had accumulated. It didn't all happen at once. And so what did I do? I got rid of all of them, 100% of them. And then I just waited. I didn't wait a month or a year or whatever. I just said, all right, I'm gonna give myself some time. Mm -hmm. When do I miss it? Immediately, YouTube Premium. I needed that back because I hate advertisements. Advertisements suck. Let's get rid of all of these advertisements. So I brought that back. And then, oh yeah, you know what? I do listen to a lot of music. Apple Music made sense to me. The streaming platform, great, did that. And then... I waited, waited, waited. Ah, you know, I don't really need this. I don't miss that at all. I don't Mm. miss Hulu. And all of a sudden you realize like, oh, I only have two or three or four streaming services now, but I've cut 10 of them out of my life. And by doing this regularly, you don't have to just do it with that, but anything that's in your budget. If you have this giant budget with 100 monthly expenses and you got down to zero, would you repurchase these monthly subscriptions mm. starting today. And if you don't feel compelled to do so, let them go. I love yeah. that you, and, sure. and like what it started with was getting rid of your internet when you move up to Ventura County. So like that was really the foundation of like, well, I don't have internet now, so I'm probably not going to need these different services. Um, so yeah, I mean, I would say you could even take it a step further. Um, what, what I've been practicing, uh, my buddy taught me this, um, you can watch whatever you need to watch on HBO Max or Paramount, whatever the streaming services that uh, Lindsay mentioned there. And then you can cancel your subscription. And then if there's something else you want to watch, you could sign back up for it a month or two later. They would love for you to sign back up. In fact, sometimes they give you a better deal when you when, mm. when they win back a customer. So um, yeah, I mean, maybe that's a middle ground for you, Lindsay. Like when's the mm. last time you watched HBO Max? When's the last time you watched Paramount Plus? Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, turn them off and turn them on when you want to use them. Or never turn them on again if right. you don't. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. You just made me think about Spotify. Like, I got to, I want to be cool. I, I want to be cool so bad, Josh. <laughs> no, <laughs> no that, is Spotify, that so- Spotify is inferior. Right? So, oh, is it not cool anymore? I'm not saying that. It's way cooler, but yeah. isn't that how it works? Many of the cooler things are inferior. Oh, yeah. yeah Apple yeah. Music's, uh, the with the lossless audio, their audio, as long as you have it all turned on in the settings, mm-hmm. their audio is so much better than Spotify's. It's not even close. What does it say about me? Because like I was just at uh, my aunt's place and I'm talking to my little cousin. She's like 13. She had a friend over. Her friend was like 13 years old and they're listening to Spotify. And um, if I mention Pandora, they look at me like I'm a dinosaur. <laughs> like Pandora. Oh, was that on the radio back in the day, grandpa? Oh my God. Anyway, but it, what does it say about me though? That like, I really do hold on to Spotify because I'm like, yeah, I am cool. I'm using what the kids are using. I don't ever use it. I use it to listen to Rogan every once in a while. But yeah, um, y- yeah, I need to I need to rethink some of these other services I have too, for sure. I'm glad this this topic got brought up. Ryan's walking out a row with the baseball cap to the side. <laughs> Hello, fellow kids. <laughs> with, the, with the backpack on. <laughs> What's up, peeps? <laughs> so, have you discovered anything that's the bomb lately? <laughs> hey, guys. What's, what's popping? No. <laughs> um, so, w- one quick thing I'll say about this is that there are fewer things we underestimate more than our ability to be happy without the things we already wish we could get rid of. And so a good example of this is think about uh, compulsive habits or addictions, you know, things that you just want to stop doing, stuff that you want to stop eating. When you're thinking about it hypothetically, oh, but will I be able to live without that, that, that pleasure, that comfort, that luxury? And, and you already wish that you could, but you don't get to experience that power and that clarity and that lightness and that freedom until you do get rid of it, right? And so I would suggest that scorch earth technique where you say this, I'm going to get rid of them all. And maybe I have five of them. And I'm going to say, I have the permission to keep something like one or two, but here's my rule. The next thing I want to watch, if I sign up for it, that's the thing I got to keep. So if a movie comes out and I want to watch it on Disney Plus, okay, I can sign up for Disney Plus. But if I do that, that's the one I'm keeping for a year. Mm. And that cost will make you say, oh, 
do I really want Disney Plus for the sake of this one movie? Or do I want to wait on something I feel more excited about? It'll just introduce an element of critical thinking to it that you might find helpful. Mm, We've got a bunch more segments to get to. We've got our obsolete objects. We have the advertisement suck segment. We'll review a sucky ad. This one, guys, I can't believe it. And it's not even technically an ad, but we'll we'll get to it. Uh, Are they selling pagers again? <laughs> sort of. Oh man, it's it's so bad that I turned it into an ad. <laughs> we also have a, a home tour, but we're taking a detour. We're going into the studio, doing a studio tour later on the private podcast. Many more live stream questions to check in with later in the episode as well. But Alabama, what do you got for us first? Here's a minimalist insight from one of our listeners. Hi guys, this is Stephanie from Harrison, Ohio. I'm calling in regard to your main first episode with Rich Roll about food. I had a comment and an added value. Um, My comment is that it was really nice to hear from somebody who is vegan um, about keeping things simple because I've transformed over the past few months um, through my vegan journey and I've discovered the same thing that just keeping things simple when it comes to food uh, makes things a whole lot easier. It's not as hard as what you might think in the beginning. But in my beginning phase of becoming vegan, I did find uh, a blog and um, a cook and baker who really added a lot of value to my my recipes and what I chose to add to my daily intake of food. And her blog is The Minimalist Baker. Her idea is that she has the least amount of ingredients, the least amount of tools to make each recipe. And I have not had a bad recipe from her blog yet. You should check her out. All right, y'all. Back to the public episode real quick, the minimal episode. We've just spent nearly three hours going through budgeting tips and new decluttering rules. But uh, real quick, for right here, right now, here's one thing that's going on in the life of the minimalist. This is before we get to our added value segment, which our added value segment, I'm getting super practical in a moment. But first, Mm -hmm. right here, right now, did you know that the minimalists have a bunch of free resources? And I mean free, free resources. Just go to theminimalists.com. And at the top, there's a little button there that says resources. It's a resources page. You can download our minimalist rule book. It's 16 rules for living with less. It's a free ebook. We have a free 30-day minimalism game calendar. You can download, you can print that out. And it shows you how many items. It keeps track of how many items you've gotten rid of throughout the month. We've got seven free minimalist wallpapers. So the five questions to ask before buying. We've got a less is now wallpaper. We've got a minimalist wallpaper, several others. You can download all those for free for your smartphone or for your desktop. Nice little reminders to simplify, declutter your devices as well. We've got the 15 ways to write better. It's a free ebook. We've got the free values worksheet over there as well. If you want to get clear on who you are, it's about getting clear on what you actually value as a person. What are your foundational values? What are your structural values? What are your surface values? And worst of all, what are your imaginary values? What values are getting in the way? You can download that values worksheet and everything else I talked about there, theminimalists.com. Just click the resources tab at the top of the page. For our added value segment this week, Jordan, let's throw this up on the screen. This is, well, when I moved earlier this year, Ryan, you and I were hanging out, me and you and Podcast Sean, we went to a coffee shop in Hollywood Mm -hmm. called Sight Glass. Yeah. And I realized like they had these little paper towel dispensers. They didn't have this one. But then I noticed that when I'm at home, there are two things I hate about paper towel dispensers. Well, at least two, maybe more than that. (laughs) <laughs> you, first it's on the counter it kind of looks ugly you put your paper towels on the counter we all know that. It, it's not aesthetically pleasing mm, really right mm. it's fine it's not hideous but it's not great but the second thing is when you have them on a on a roll you're putting your wet dirty hands on top and trying to pull the paper towel. Ta- you know what i'm talking about right ryan's got wet dirty hands oh yeah. they're so dirty <laughs> i love that you know, clean i love that you know rose over paper towel holders i it, it's like i i also i'm glad i don't but i the piece of me really wishes i like could pay attention like this to things but yeah you're right i got wet dirty paper towels <laughs> <laughs> no i'm talking about your wet dirty hands ryan <laughs> they're so don't wet. you kink shame me <laughs> <laughs> anyway what i noticed is I use too many paper towels when they're on the roll. And so 
I went ahead and bought this. It's this is not an ad, obviously. Torque Express countertop multifold hand towel dispenser. Mm. I bought this for my kitchen at home, and two things happened. One is whenever I need a paper towel, I can just simply grab one. Mm-hmm. It's not ripping a bunch off. I don't have to touch a bunch of things. I just grab one paper towel. Yeah. And yes, I use paper towels occasionally. But what I'm using now, I'm using far fewer paper towels as a result, which mm-hmm. is not something I expect. So this thing is adding value to my life because when I do need a paper towel, in the rare instance that I do, I'm not taking five or 10 or whatever. I'm just taking the one little sheet that I need. I use it. I get rid of it. There's no mess. And so this one thing in my life has not only reduced my overall consumption, but it's made the experience much better. It looks so much better on my countertop. Mm. And it feels so much better in my life. So we'll put a link to this one in the show notes for anyone who is uh, who might be interested. No, we're not going to put a link. I want the company that makes these to call me for a sponsorship. Then we'll post the link. Otherwise, <laughs> everybody's got to figure out where to find it on oh their own. Oh my goodness. Yeah, we don't get paid for advertisements. <laughs> you know TK I mean? does. <laughs> <laughs> not a chance. As we said earlier on, Shoot. as we said earlier on the private podcast, I don't like the taste of leather, so I'm not licking anyone's boots. Mm. Especially Torque Express countertop multifold <laughs> hand towel dispenser. <laughs> Man, I'm just trying to get you paid for what you're already doing. Oh, that's anyway. so good. This non-boot <laughs> licking segment is brought to you by... Hey, man, they ain't paying me a damn thing to talk about not. it. Of course not. No, it's just it's the irony. Everything we do is ironic, I Josh. won't lick your boots, but I'll sell them for you. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, TK, we've got a bunch more surprise questions on the private podcast this week. Like, what can I do when inflation increases my fear of missing out? What do the minimalists think about those new 50-year home mortgages? What is the minimalist new out-in-the-open rule for decluttering? Plus a million more questions for the minimalists. And if you want to hear all that, visit patreon.com slash the minimalist to check out the minimalist private podcast, or you can just click the link in the description. That's our show for today. If you leave here with just one message, let it be this. Love people and use things because the opposite never works. Thanks for listening, y'all. We'll see you next time. Every little thing you think that you need Every little thing you think that you need Every little thing that's just feeding your greed Oh, I bet that you'd be fine without it